Hi, I'm Judy Tayabji. Welcome to the Friday version of Tayabji, a little bit unconventional today. We're calling it a Funky Friday. We have everything from Howie Siegel, who you'll notice was in the preceding piece, to uh, which is the entertainment category. Mailbag, which is actually your calls at the end of the show. And uh, the movie reviews will include a movie that's been nominated for a Gemini Award, picked out of 2,200 entries. But one of my most uh, favorite sections is going to be the political satire with someone who we're referring to as BC's wise guy, Mark Lear and Young. First, let's take a look at a clip from Heart of the People, which is the movie that was produced by the native people near the Sarita River about some environmental issues. And this is the one that's been nominated for a Gemini. We all need to look at how do we preserve this earth. And today's society is a very destructive society. And we're losing the wildlife. I mean, we're, we're moving, uh, we're, we moved a deer out of the area, we moved a bear out of the area, we moved a fish out of the area. We not only moved them out, but we destroyed a large population in them. We wasted a large population in them. Non-native people have a perception of native people. They think that we're, we're drunks, we're lazy, we're welfare bums, and, and all this other negative perception. What they don't realize is that we're, we're concerned about people. We're willing to share our land with people. We're, we're people that want to restore the land to, to its original state, or the environment. The environment, the land, has to be restored to, to its original state. We care more about the land and the sea than they would ever realize. And, and that's why we have such an interest in, in this process that we're going to. And that's a challenge I put to non-native people. Get in our canoe that says we're going to beat or exceed existing environmental standards. Come on. Get in our canoe. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. Let's work together rebuild the rivers the logging companies destroyed regardless where you're from let's learn to work together to rebuild the salmon spawning riverbeds let's rebuild it we've been watching a clip from heart of the people which has been nominated for a gemini award it was produced by the hoyat people i'm hoping i've got this right we're joined in studio by Hereditary Chief Tom Happynook, and Check Six movie reviewer Howie Siegel. Thanks, both of you, for joining me and everybody else, and we want to hear from you. I warned everybody that you're going to be muzzled. You're going to be kind of restrained today, Howie. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And you promised you'd be sensitive. Stop. Um, so for Tom Happynook, first of all, uh, were you surprised to be nominated for Gemini? How does it feel? You're way off in this little area in Barclay Sound producing this movie, and you've got a lot of recognition for it. Well, we're thrilled. We're thrilled. Uh, the film has gone beyond our expectations. Um, we wanted to uh, do two things with the, with the film. One was to provide, a, for our people, a, uh, um, a historic account of the Sarita River. And the other was to uh, get the message out there uh, about what has taken place over the years. Well, what um, kind of, that's when you talk about some of the environmental changes and that kind of thing. Um, why did you produce the video? What was the objective? I mean, other than telling the story. Well, <laughs> the objective was to to uh, get the, get the uh, the factual information out about the uh, the historic levels of fish and uh, forests that were once in our territories. Okay. Now I know Howie that you we and I we both looked at this movie together, uh, and I know you have a whole bunch. Of, first, you said. That when I said, will you come watch this with me? Oh, oh it sounds like I so said, dry. Gee, let's watch an ecological film about a disaster. Let's chew on razor blades. It'll be more enjoyable. <laughs> and then? And then we watched it together. And the mastery of the film, the, the beauty and the, the wisdom that came out of your people. It's, it's quite something to see Howie Siegel in reverence. Okay? And like Mr. Bagelhead from the movie review before the, the show started. Um, that was what I thought. Was, if, if you could move Howie Siegel, you know, no wonder you got no, a nomination. Judy was so moved, she stopped pawing me. Oh, <laughs> stop. stop. <laughs> Not, no, no, no. Um, I think it's important, you know, that what we'd like to, to, to get out there is that uh, listening to what you're saying to Howie is that yeah, the recollections from our elders are a very, very important component to this film. 
but we also wanted to tie in the scientific part of it. That's why we had the uh, the 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 um, anthropologists, anthropologists and, uh, and those people uh, to tie it in, along with the archival footage, mm -hmm. just so that you could have a vision and and actually see what it was like years ago. What is it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, that's what makes it so critically important because you, uh, your people, have the only real vision left for the rest of us in British Columbia. All the other traditional sources that we look for, politicians particularly, are bankrupt. I just wanted to ask you, how are things now? Has the movie made a difference? Um, what has taken place since the movie is uh, a Salmon Enhancement Fund has been set up by our nation. Um, it is run through the Hoayat Band Office. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding, has been negotiated with M and B, um, and they will be awarding contracts to our people to try and bring some employment into our community. So that's good news. It is good news. So, I, so uh, but it's a small right. step. It's yeah. a really a small step in 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 terms of uh, our whole territory, which is our vision and which is is what how we're speaking to. Yeah. Could you have McBill and Bloedel come over my house and sharpen my chainsaw for Okay, <laughs> enough. We have to take a break. We've been speaking with Hereditary Chief Tom Happynook about a movie called Heart of the People. We'll have to watch for it at the Gemini Awards. Back after a quick break with some movie reviews. Tayabshi is brought to you in part by CFAX 1070, Victoria's news authority. New Purina Chicken Meal and Rice Formula Cat Chow. It's as nutritious as specialty foods like science diet feline maintenance. But how will your cat like it? Purina Chicken Meal and Rice Formula. It helps you feel so fine and gives your fur that shine. Meow, baby. Probably miss breakfast, too. Kellogg's Nutrigrain Cereal Bars, part of a complete breakfast. Good food, on the go. You didn't tell me. You never asked. But I thought we had everything in common. We do. We're both great tasting, except that I'm low in fat. Low in fat? Yeah. Y you say it like it's no big deal. Kellogg's Rice Krispie Squares have always been low in fat. Hey, now you know. Who'd have guessed? When he first started out, people told him, only experts invest in mutual funds. But he didn't listen. He found the funds that were right for him. And year after year, he found the money to invest. Now he's retired. He can ski every day. He's made it. And he's no expert. AGF Group of Funds. What are you doing after work? We're talking to Howie Siegel, Czech's movie reviewer. We're going to be talking to Mark Lear and Young in a minute. He's going to give us uh, not quite the news. And then we will take your calls on whatever you want to talk about this being a funky Friday. Now, movie reviews. Who else would strap a couple of bagels to their head and walk around trying to get re reactions from people? My wife, Marion, would do that. Oh, actually. would she? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what else? Mary Beth Burton, she was the one who gave me the idea. Do you think that small children were frightened of you when you were doing your movie review? <laughs> Were they running and screaming? That surprised me. You saw a lot of children in the movie theater at 9 o'clock on a Tuesday night. Right. I suggest that when I grew up, kids never went out on school nights to movies, ever. Yeah, that is quite interesting. Actually, uh, that was one thing that came to mind. Where are their parents? They seem too young to be sort of camped out on the street. Uh, if you didn't see the new news, um, Howie's movie review of Star Wars was right at the end of it leading into this segment. Howie, what's on right now? If people are wondering what to do this weekend, I've got to tell you something. Yeah. We went to the English patient, mm -hmm. and the only time I cried was when I realized how much money I'd spent going. It was, it was boring. I thought it was boring. I thought it was pretentious. Judy, you're a tough chick. You're not affected by tragic romance. Oh, it was so melodramatic, you know, and you couldn't like the characters. And Ralph Fiennes, that's his name, right? The, the guy who was the romantic... Fiennes. Movie. Fiennes. He looked frantic. He looked manic when he was falling for her. He was like staring at her intensely. He made my hair stand on my neck. You are maligning the next Oscar winner. <laughs> well, there you go. No, no sacred cows. Um, well, if it was a sacred cow, she probably would have killed it with a lethal injection. <laughs> uh, this was a, a war nurse 
who deserted from her unit, abducted right. a patient, right. subjected him to unorthodox medical procedures, she killed him, right. and found happiness. And you have a problem with the film? I wonder why. Oh, come on. That was such a small part of the plot. I mean, the main plot was this guy who was this burn victim, you know, going back in time to a very questionable evolution of a relationship that, where his character isn't even likable. You know, I mean, it was... Anyway, so what's on that might please those of us who like things to blow up on set? I don't know. Give me a clue what's playing. I don't know. You're the movie guy. I'm the movie guy, I know. But, you know, I'm, the, I'm kind of nonchalant about the whole thing. Um, English patient. Oh, Jerry Flint. With people versus Jerry Flint. Larry Flint. Jerry. No, McGuire. Larry is. Okay. No, Jerry's his brother. That's yeah. the better. Oh, okay. Is it Larry Jerry? I'm the movie reviewer. What we've am got I to about? wrap. We've got to wrap this. We're <laughs> going to come. Back. We've got. To, actually, we've got with us Mark Lear and Young, and he's going to give us not quite the news. Our tops for today. BC Premier Glenn Clark kept an election promise this morning. He immediately apologized, said it was a mistake, and swore that it would never happen again. A review panel has suggested that BC MLA should receive a $9,000 raise. However, the panel has suggested government MLAs could make more money if they were paid by the lie. BC Finance Minister Andrew Petter is concerned that photo radar is not generating enough revenue because not enough people are speeding. In order to fight the provincial deficit, the BC government plans to launch a new advertising campaign be a good British Columbian, drive dangerously. <laughs> the BC government appears determined to push through no-fault insurance. Glenn Clark believes this is perfectly consistent with his style of no-fault government. Says Clark, if it's a problem, it's not our fault. The BC Liberal Party is holding their annual convention in Penticton this weekend, and there is a dress code, no plaid shirts. As mad cow disease continues to spread through Europe, the Canadian government remains unconcerned about it coming here. Says BC Agriculture Minister Dave Zernhelt, Canadian cows don't get mad. They just complain and complain and complain. Despite an improved economy, Federal Finance Minister Paul Martin has refused to stop cuts to Canadian cultural services. Martin explains that when the Americans officially take control, he wants to make sure that our books are balanced. And speaking of books, the Governor General's Award for Fiction has been awarded to the Liberals' Little Red Book. Heritage Minister Sheila Copps has said, quote, she will go to war for Canadian culture. Soldiers have recently been stationed out front of all our bookstores, and no one is allowed to leave without buying a Margaret Atwood novel. Defense Minister Doug Young is under fire for describing Reform MP Deborah Gray as, quote, more than a slab of bacon. Says Gray, quote, that's just not kosher. Staff at Victoria's Empress Hotel have taken a strike vote. Apparently the staff is looking for better seniority rights and all the management is currently offering is a weekly bonus of a half dozen, of a half dozen fresh scones. Some sad news in the world of entertainment. The CBC has cancelled Rita McNeil. The CBC apparently decided Rita had to go after she ate the Rankin family. Elizabeth Taylor is recovering in hospital today after an operation to remove a tumor. Apparently it wasn't a tumor after all, it was an engagement ring. In sports, Canucks General Manager Pat Quinn says he believes his team has what it takes to win the Stanley Cup this season. Quinn is currently at Vancouver General Hospital undergoing psychiatric observation. I'm Mark Laren Young and that's not quite the news. And we'll be back after a quick break with your calls to 1-888-383-6036. Mark's going to stick around, and it's on whatever you want to talk about. Tayabshi is brought to you in part by Metro, Lexus, Toyota, Victoria, and Duncan. What good are stylish frames if they're too heavy to be comfortable? LensCrafters has these new lightweight titanium P frames from Luxottica. These weigh about 40% less than other metal frames. These are Luxottica titanium P's, and these are regular metal frames. Look at the difference. Isn't wow. that great? They're wow. much lighter. Yeah. The titanium P frames are fashionable, they're comfortable, they're lightweight, and very durable. They're the kind of high-tech solution I need to satisfy my customers. Wow. I love seeing them smile when that happens. LensCrafters, helping people see better, one hour at a time.
the Harlem Globetrotters live at Victoria's Memorial Arena, February 21st. Get tickets at the box office or charge by phone. The taste of rotisserie chicken. Bologna with the world's finest spices. Ham with Dijon mustard. Mesquite turkey breast. After all the flavor is packed into new lifestyle ultra low fat meats, there's hardly any room for fat. Introducing new lifestyle ultra low fat from Schneider's. So packed with taste, there's hardly any room for fat. Mark Lear and Young has, has sticking around so he can help me with the phone lines. But before we go to the phones, Mark, that was very funny. Thank you very much. You know, yeah. And you, you meet the CanCon requirements, the Canadian content? Yes, I tried for 100% Canadian jokes, but I just couldn't resist Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth it just Taylor, popped into right. my head. And Nothing like taking a shot at the sick. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Nothing like getting someone when they're down. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, the taste requirements sort of diminish for big <laughs> U.S. superstars. That's right. That's right. Oh, here's my pen. Thank you. Cool. Um, now, I, we can just go straight to the phone lines, I guess. And we'll take line two. Line two, you're with us. Go ahead, please. And... Maybe we'll put that back on hold. Okay, <laughs> the number here is 1-888-383-6036. We do have a couple of lines open, which is flashing. a big change. I know, all week uh, we've had quite a few people phoning in and, and complaining that they can't get through, so today we're okay. Now, um, before we take calls, I noticed that there are a few things. There's some controversy about uh, the government breaking the law. Did you hear about this? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, other the election law or, <laughs> oh, or no, just no. a new law that they've broken? Well, there's one on uh, tra the Transportation, what is it, the Highways Act. And I guess the Union of BC Municipalities, which is the governing body or the, the association of all the mayors and municipalities, yeah. says that the provincial government is going to be breaking the law by making them pay for highway repairs. Oh, I like that. Okay, see so you know the punchline? Okay. The Premier says, we'll change the law. Okay, so they're going to be able to do it oh, anyway. Oh, no, Dave Zernhelt explained it. We're the government. We can do whatever we want. That's right. That's I right. Mean, I, think that, I think that should be the NDP's motto. The government can do whatever, <laughs> whatever it wants. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, I'm not quite sure. Let's try line two again. Line two, can you hear me now? Hello? There you go. Hi, sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, You're on the air. Okay, first question. Okay, do anybody remember um, where they saw all three Star Wars movies in? Aha. Uh -huh. You mean which town? Yeah. And like what theater? See, I saw Star Wars at the old Telecom Drive-In, which is now um, Telecom Mall. Right. I saw Empire Strikes Back at the old Coronet, which is now a business building. Right. And I saw the old Hido, or at the old the Hido is where I saw Return of the Jedi. So that's, a, that's a good question. Actually, the, uh, what the caller is mm. reminding me of is we used to have drive-in theaters, and then, you know, you could go there with the big, huge screens, and it was fun. Right. Yeah, I, saw, I actually saw my first drive-in movie in years. I went to see Independence Day at a drive-in because I thought that's what Independence Day was made for. I oh. saw Star Wars Capital Six, but I don't remember where I saw the other two. Well, I, I know, know I, I saw, saw it all in Kelowna. It was a very, very small town back then. Oh, this like, is easy for you. There was probably like there one, was one theater, theater in Kelowna. <laughs> you saw it at the one theater in Kelowna. Hey, <laughs> right, we're going to go to Frank. Frank, uh, you're on the air. Yeah, I got a uh, question about that uh, car uh, initiative the other day. Right. Okay, like uh, Tom Harris okay. was mentioning something about if you drive a fuel-efficient vehicle, you know, that's the best way to go. Well, uh, what, it, what about, uh, you know, when it comes to being in a head-on collision or whatever, uh, I think you'd suffer more of a, an impact on a collision with a smaller vehicle than you would driving a mid-sized vehicle. Oh, so what's point. the difference, eh? Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks for that. Um, you caught yesterday's show, yeah. and that was quite heated, and uh, Tom Harris being the uh, representative from the auto dealers. And that's absolutely right. If you get one of those little commuters, you know, you get squished like a bug in a pileup. Try not to think about that, because I really like driving small cars. Uh, oh, so really? I just think that if you're driving a really small car, you can get out of the way faster. Right. So that's sort of how my brain goes. Okay, well, that's sort of the reverse side of it. As long as they don't hit you, you're okay. Exactly. Okay, we're going to be joined by Robert from Chilliwack. Hi, Robert. Hello. Your turn. Yes, I'm very, very concerned about our health plan. Okay. And uh, number one, uh, I might bring up this subject, that uh, here in Chilliwack, uh, we have a mass parade to the courthouse to keep it open. Right. I have a neighbor who's got to wait till 19 February of next year, that's 12 months, for a hip operation. Right. He informs me that he's on, they are only allowed one operation a month wow. in the Chilliwack Hospital. Wow. So I'm concerned about if I or any of my children have a problem. Yeah, then, then what? That's well, quite a lineup. What would one do? 
uh, would you say that this is a legal problem from Ottawa, who has made such cutbacks and left mm. the responsibility entirely to the provinces, when Ottawa was the one who legislated a health plan? Well, that's a good question. Um, actually, the color raise is an interesting point. It, everywhere you look, there are longer and longer lineups. Yes. If they can have one operation a month... That's a terrifying thought. Uh, that's going to be pretty tricky. I think to answer the question, though, um, you're right. It starts with the federal government. The federal government downloads hundreds of millions to the province, and they dump it down to the property tax level, and there's only one taxpayer. We pick it up at every level. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with your calls. And uh, if you're on hold, please be patient, because the lines are all ringing at once. Uh, the number, why don't you write it down for a little later, is 1-888-383-6036. Be right back. isn't thinking about Sam or last night. She's forgotten about the flowers, the candlelight, the violin music, and the moonlight under which he proposed. Ah, that must be good orange juice. Tropicana Pure Premium. 100% pure, nothing added, nothing taken away. You just can't pick a better tasting juice. New Purina Chicken Meal and Rice Formula Cat Chow. It's as nutritious as specialty foods like science diet feline maintenance. But how will your cat like it? Purina Chicken Meal and Rice Formula. It helps you feel so fine and gives your fur that shine. Meow, baby. You don't have to be a rally pilot to stay in the race. Make sure you always have perfect driving visibility. With SureWipe, the spring for safe driving. Easy to install, SureWipe improves the performance of your wiper system. With SureWipe, your wipers hug the windshield even in the worst weather conditions. SureWipe, on sale at Canadian Tire, UAP Napa authorized dealers, Auto Pro Mechanical, new car dealers and auto parts stores. We're back with your calls to 1-888-383-6036, and we have Sting. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for letting me. This uh, is fine. Yeah, Mark Lear and Young, a political satirist, BC's wise guy. And we have Jake from Vancouver. Go ahead, please. Hi, uh, Judy. Hi. Uh, I got a question for Mark, actually. I really enjoyed your little spoof about the uh, politics in BC. I'm wondering what you think is going to happen, or if you could have some comments about the next federal election. I mean, we've got the Liberals... Uh, showing you can get something for doing nothing. The second most popular party in the country is the one we kicked back to two seats. Right. And I don't yep. even have time to get into the reform in the block. So I was wondering if you had any comments. Excellent. Oh, I kind of like your routine. Um, oh, I think the next federal election is going to be quite surreal because we're sitting here going, you know, we've got Paul Martin, who I figure is sort of the best finance minister that Brian Mulroney never had. Right. So <laughs> the Liberals have basically become the Conservatives. The Conservatives are trying to become the Liberals. The Bloc Quebecois is sort of trying to just do whatever it is they do, and reform is trying to punch everybody out. And, meanwhile, and not only that, Preston Manning's makeover is great for Ontario, but all the Westerners are going, hey, Oh, yeah, hey, the hey. Westerners are going, Preston with a perm? I don't think so. <laughs> that's right. So, you know, now you've got Preston Manning walking out with a perm, and that's not going to play in Calgary, you know? Yeah. And so... It's going to be a weird, weird election. And then there's Alexa McLaughlin, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, good old no, Alexa McLaughlin, and she's... I think the undecided is going to win. I think so. I well, think that's what's going to happen. Oh, they deserve to win. Okay. The undecided deserves to win this one. <laughs> we have Patricia from Vancouver. Go ahead, please. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm an old-age pensioner uh, here in Steveston. And, you know, uh, the thing is, I do voluntary work. On the, well, I have, and I am continuing to try to try. But you know, it costs so much. Sure. Uh, the, you know, your bus fare, That's and right. then you have to have clothing. Sometimes and you have to eat out. So on. So there's ex all these extras, and that's why I have to kind of limit this extremely. I'm very appreciative of the old age pension. I want to thank God or the government for it. But I wish we had a little bit of, you know help for volunteers. Uh, can that's, you make some remark on that, please? Yeah. And I shall hang up. That's a, that's a good point, actually. A lot of people say that if, if only it were a little easier to volunteer, yeah. that, that, that we'd actually have so much more done, a lot more produ you know, productivity. 
Well, I think it would be wonderful if they had some way to help out volunteers who needed that help to get them. Well, especially an old age pensioner. You're yeah. not exactly getting rich. It's nice that she's grateful for it, but it's such a small amount of money. No, yeah. no. Now, some organizations, uh, by the way, will actually um, help you out with some of your expenses, basic bus fares and uh, the occasional meal expenses. So oh, that's cool. another thing to keep in mind. Yeah. We're going to talk to Sandy from Brentwood Bay. Hi. Hello. Yeah, it's you. Hi. Hi. Um, I just want to... Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're hearing? You're hearing yeah. there's a five-second delay. So if you're oh, okay. listening... Okay. I just want to know why they have low-income housing for seniors and for people that have children, but they don't have it. Low-income housing for or people, young adults just starting out, like, to, to get started, to have a house and... Yeah, that's the, basically my, my, my gripe there. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, I think what she's talking about is an affordable housing strategy. Yeah. Remember when we used to actually talk about that as public policy before we talked about being crushed under huge taxes? Well, but that all went away with the deficit. Now you're not supposed to talk about little things like the fact that people can't find places to live. So. Right, yeah, basic things like that. Places to live, places to work. Yeah. Places to, you know, make sure that they can get operations when they need them. Well, wasn't there some wonderful theory at one point that there was going to be affordable housing? And yeah, that was part of the national out? strategy. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, that's a, that's a good point, though. It shouldn't, you shouldn't have to either be, you know, a, a senior or have children to qualify. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, we've run out of time for your calls. I see the, the, the lines are jammed again, which is wonderful. And cool. we have next week. There's always next week. We've been speaking with Mark Lear and Young. We'll be back after a quick break with uh, Rounding Off the Week. By now, most everyone knows that electricity doesn't come from a hole in the wall. But did you know there are easy, power-smart ways to save electricity inside your home? Like washing clothes in cold water, running the dishwasher with full loads on the energy-saving cycle, and turning off unnecessary lights. You save a little money and help preserve the environment. So plug in to PowerSmart for a lot of good reasons. It's the right thing to do. From the very start, back in 1957, people have always asked us the same question. If I invest in mutual funds today, when I retire, where will I be? And for 40 years, our answer has always been the same. Wherever you want to be. AGF Group of Funds. What are you doing after work? When you think of window coverings and upholstery, think Ruffle and Brown. Ruffel. And Brown. Oh yes, Ruffel and Brown Interiors are the window wall covering and upholstery specialists. Let their interior designers help you put the finishing touch on any room with the right blinds, draperies, wall coverings, or upholstery fabric. Complement an existing room or start from the carpet up. Isn't it time to unlock the potential of your home? Call Ruffel, or Ruffel and Brown and get started today. I want to thank so many of you who sent in flowers and cards and letters of congratulations this week, and those of you who phoned in or who've tried to phone in, and everyone who's watched. It's been a very successful week, a little bit nerve-wracking for a while, but uh, we got through it okay, and next week will be even better. Uh, here's the address. Oh, forgot that part. The address and the email address and, uh, and also our fax number. So if you have any comments, suggestions, questions, communications, whatever it is, feel free to drop us a line. Now next Next week, we have from Monday to Friday, first we're talking about an issue related to the first show we did. We're talking about grandparents versus the system, uh, talking about child custody and also some rights that they want to have uh, in protecting children. They're fighting social services and the justice system. On Tuesday, yes, our very own Premier Glenn Clark will take your calls to the Premier. We have him for the full half hour. We're going to start off with a little video collage reminding you of some of his evolution in politics. On Wednesday, some good news, actually. Uh, sexual assault response teams with the police, the nurses, the support workers. A better system in place? Will it make a difference is the question we're asking. On Thursday's show, something that some of you have been waiting for, the legalization of hemp and marijuana with MP Keith Martin and your calls, a controversial issue, one that needs to be dealt with. And on Friday, National NDP leader Alexa McDonough and your calls, not Alexa McLaughlin, Mark. <laughs> and uh, we'll be happy to talk to her as we head toward a federal election. And I want to uh, thank you, and I will see you at 12.30 on Monday. I'll take your calls as well. 
next. Bye. Previously on Sunset Beach. How long has been known that you weren't dead from the beginning? I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do all this without his help. He never told me. He never let on. Well, it was a secret. 